over the years I've had a lot of teachers and some of them merely taught us what the book said you know what the curriculum entailed and they, they read to us and they were just on their podium and when class was done they went away other teachers the good ones my favorite ones took it to another level and they gave new definition to the term educator and, and mentor and they gave you insight based on years of experience in this job to what you should expect outside of the curriculum how it feels what what additional factors come along with protective service work on a human level and those are the people that I looking back I was a sponge I soaked up all the water they poured out and I, I hung on every word they say and I was naive enough as a college student to think that I understood and think that I really had a firm grip on what they were saying about the extracurricular emotion but I can tell you that once you hit go and you punch in for service of day one uh, of being a servant to other people you realize how unprepared you are for that experience how much you don't know and how much you don't understand about the way first responder work actually makes you feel as a person every day I go to work I experience a tremendous wave of highs and lows going from calm to chaos in in the blink of an eye and that starts to take a toll on a person emotionally um, can take a toll on a person physically and mentally and that damage that's done to your body whether it's poor sleep or overexposure to uh, challenging situations it has to be let out somewhere when you make a choice to live for someone else and give yourself completely to a selfless profession your family gets pushed off to the back of the line and oftentimes they don't understand it and this creates a lot of tension and really feeling a, a disconnect between you and the people that you care the most about in the world at some point you might find yourself realizing that sleep isn't uh, a viable option anymore uh, you kind of rest on the memories of what sleep used to feel like <clears throat> whether you're working third shift or you're swinging shifts back and forth uh, or you have short turnaround times or emergency call outs uh, rest is a very challenging thing to to get and to maintain and to try to stabilize it's it's not like it used to be lack of good sleep and, and rest starts to affect the brain and combining it with all the other stressors of of work you can find yourself battling things like depression uh, utilizing heavy drinking or or self-medicating to try to fall asleep uh, irritability to those around you even those that you're close with who who you don't intend to be irritable with uh, and really just a general at times almost a general hatred for people the type of fatigue that sets in and causes irritability and frustration for me a lot of times it was just because I don't sleep because I you know, I got a couple jobs and, and I, I give hundred and ten percent to everything that I do in, in both jobs and it becomes really taxing and sleep isn't always an option and sometimes it's an option that I want so badly but I just can't make it happen and uh, I know plenty of people who are who are in the job that rely on heavy drinking and medication to try to fall asleep and the, the problem there is it's it's a destructive habit it's a destructive tendency it can be a dangerous tendency you start you know combining your own doses of medication sleeping pills and, and alcohol or or whatever it is and you might not wake up in the morning if you're not careful and if you do wake up you are probably gonna wake up groggy and feeling even worse than you would feel if you hadn't even tried to go to sleep and hadn't tried your self-medication it's it, it can really catch up with you and that's a that's a dangerous road in this job depression sets in pretty easily uh, it can and um, that's due to the things that you deal with all the time you know what you consider to be your normal life is working and operating in someone else's hell in in their darkest moments whether it's a violent situation or it's 
it's a, a traumatic experience that they're going through that you have to keep your calm through. You have to be able to bottle up those feelings and, and what you're seeing and, and taking in. You have to be able to lock it up and store it away. And eventually, in the dark of the night, when you lay down and go to bed or you wake up in the middle of the night, it's really easy to have those things come back. And, and sooner or later, the emotion pours out into your body. And uh, it can be challenging. And it certainly changes the way that you look at people. Um, up to the point where it, it changed me at one point with people who were very close to me that I would I, I could look at them and it just felt different because every face I saw for a while was attached to a face that I saw at work was attached to a memory that I thought I'd forgotten and uh, it was it was really challenging to try to try to fight through that to make it even more personal, when you're silently fighting in your head, it can lead to a, a significant feeling of emptiness and isolation even at home. And a lot of that is because we choose to generally associate with ourselves, with our own kind. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll rationalize it and justify it as saying, you know, my family won't understand or I don't want my family to have to try to understand some of the experiences that I have and therefore you don't talk to them. And that creates isolation on both ends. They feel like they're a million miles away from you and you appear to be on a different planet from them. And it's, it can be very challenging to maintain a, a home life with, with that stuff going on. The irony of, of hating people is you can, you can develop a, a certain level of hatred for people. And it's, it's usually a level of of anger and frustration for the very people that you you signed up to help you signed up to protect you signed up to serve um, this usually happens at least for me it happens or, or happened for a while with the repeat offenders you know the recidivist customers that would always come in the frequent flyers that it's always the same song and dance with them and uh, you're always fighting the same battle and you just know they're never going to understand and uh, you can pretty easily lose grasp on the fact that you signed up to be there for them and it, it makes it very challenging. You don't have a choice when you go to work who you're going to help uh, nor how many times you're going to help them, whether it's every day, a couple times a day maybe, or you know once a month. Uh, that's not a choice you're allowed to make anymore. The responsibility is on your shoulders to, to do the job and uh, it can become very frustrating and create a lot of animosity towards people in general. Um, which is, it's not what we want, it's not what we're designed to do. When you look at the relationship life of people in this job, it's tough. It's really tough when one person's in and one person's out because your significant other might not understand what's going on. They might not try to understand and you, you as I said before, might not open up to them out of a, um, an assumed uh, protective measure for that person. And there's a lot of truth to the mentality that people in this community marry into each other. You know, cops marry cops, doctors marry doctors or nurses or cops, fire, EMS, whatever it is. And uh, that's, that's good from the position that both people involved in the relationship at that point will understand the demands of work, whether it's the long hours or whether it's the touch and go call outs and the stress and, and the things that you bring home. You know, both people see eye to eye on that level. But now you're almost taking two people who are independently ticking time bombs and putting them together. And uh, if my math is correct, that's doubling your chance for relationship failure. There's a lot of failed relationships in, the, in this community, um, probably more so than there is in, in the civilian world. So your relationships take a lot more work to try to <clears throat> establish and maintain and uh, really maintain the human component without becoming so self-centered in your own day that you don't want to hear about the other persons or you begin to try to one-up each other. Um, just There's a lot of things that can go wrong in, in a relationship when, when both parties are working, um, working for something bigger and working to serve other people. You know, two people. A really good way that was put to me one time is uh, I know a nurse who said she goes to work with a hundred pennies in a bag and uh, every patient every person she talks to that day takes a penny 
and when she goes home she is spent and she was very thankful for her husband for being able to stick with her through it and to understand when she comes home and she's silent for a half hour she doesn't speak and she she just doesn't have a lot of energy to possibly go out and do things or a lot of energy to to put into the relationship that verify and solidify the validation of the other person you know you come home and your tank is empty and it can be really hard to to not have it feel like a chore to try to maintain a relationship with somebody whether they're in or out now I'm not saying this to deter anybody from this line of work or to paint it in a bad light but what I'm trying to do is reach out and pass along the effort um, for anybody out there considering uh, a protective service career to really consider the options um, and consider the consequences the good and the bad and the ugly it's it's so much more than just a textbook it's there's it's, it's a feeling it's a very very real feeling and uh, probably just like I was when I was in school you know I understood the words just like you guys are understanding my words right now and that's all they're gonna be and until you actually say go and you you punch your ticket it's it's not gonna truly sink into your brain but there's a lot to consider and I highly encourage you to consider all avenues of it I think it's worth it I think it's worth it to get into it and uh, the the experiences that you're gonna gain and what you're gonna live through and live to to remember on the positive side are experiences that you can't even begin to express and quantify with words it, it's just uh, the highs are, are really high and the rush is, is really good um, the the camaraderie that you make those that you work with you're gonna establish bonds with people that become closer than your family at times and you know you can lean on them with everything you have and they're always gonna be there to pick you up if you need it and you're walking through hell and high water with people that that really get you they, they understand you and they will always have your back no matter what the situation is so anybody out there who's considering getting into protective service work hit it hard because it's gonna take everything you got and to the men and women who are out there doing the job every day and every night selflessly putting their emotional and physical well-being on the line we support you we thank you and keep up the good work because we're proud of you